No, you'll be at Manchester City against Newcastle for ESPN FC tomorrow. City minus Kevin De Bruyne. How different are they with and without the Mercurial Belgian? I mean, obviously, if you take a player of that quality out of any team, the team is going to suffer. Um, the interesting thing about De Bruyne is that Pep and City, even last season, were beginning to to come up with a plan to to deal with with not having him available. There were there were times in very very tight games where Pep would take De Bruyne off after around sixty sixty five minutes, and a couple of years ago that would have been completely unthinkable. So it's it's not that that you take De Bruyne out of that City team and, and they don't function at all. Obviously, it's a massive miss because of the um, the number of assists that, that he generates. They have got players in there that can that can step up, the likes of Phil Foden. Foden is an interesting one in that much of his time at City has played out wide. The speculation for, for a long time has been that his position ultimately will be inside in a central in a high central midfield role. And maybe with, with Kevin De Bruyne out now that you'll see Phil Foden play in that position um, more often than he has done in the last couple of years. So, um, you know, obviously a, a massive blow. It, it may be that City have to go into the transfer market to replace him simply from a, num- a number standpoint that they need someone else to, to fill that gap. But I think Pep, you know, the, the kind of manager he is will, will back himself to come up with a plan to deal with that. It's like you've seen the script. That was absolutely seamless in the transition to Gab Marcotti talking about the transfer market, talking about Lucas Paqueta, someone you've seen play plenty times, and talking about him as a possible replacement for for Kevin De Bruyne, Gab, what are you hearing about this one? And would he be a would he be a good addition to the way that City play? I think he'd be a necessary uh, addition to Manchester City first and foremost. And um, obviously, it looks like they're getting Jeremy Doku as well, who, who is a winger. And so maybe the thinking is Doku allows you to play Bernardo Silva inside, who's another. Another option who can, you know, maybe do some of the things that Kevin De Bruyne does. But the fact of the matter is, they're short. And I'll tell you what, they were short last year too. Um, it's just that, you know, it worked out because people didn't get injured at the wrong times. But fundamentally, you have six players for your front four attacking positions. And, you know, if one is out, no problem. Your in comes Foden, in comes Alvarez, whatever. If two are out, then you got to turn to Cole Palmer territory, right? Uh, and that's a problem. And then you don't have changes. And then if last year you played 61 games like you did, like you did last year, rather, uh, then everybody's going to get tired. And, you know, this thing with De Bruyne's hamstring, you can go and blame UEFA and FIFA and too many games and blah, 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 all he wants. The fact is the man is overworked. You, you know he's overworked. Uh, you know that he's injury prone at this stage of his career. So I think Paqueta fits the mold. The problem is uh, West Ham know this as well. And that's why, you know, if City value him in the, the 60 million range, West Ham feel entitled to say, hey, how about, you know, 100 million? Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, you're, it's, it's a situation where the seller, you know, gets to name the price to some degree. I mean, I think they are looking at other options as well. Uh, I think Pep has enough leverage where if he feels he needs Paqueta, um, I think he can get them to push the boat out a little bit. You know what? Maybe Manchester United want City to get Paqueta as well because then that way West Ham will have a little bit more money and uh, <laughs> maybe they can make it a little bit sweeter to take Harry Maguire away. <laughs> I was looking, Rob, at uh, Newcastle's last two or three games at Newcastle. A couple of 2-0s and a 5-0 as well. This is a different Newcastle now though, isn't it? And after scoring five against Villa, what are you expecting is their game plan in this one? Because City can be got at. It's how you keep the door shut at the other end is the problem. Yeah, but though Newcastle showed last season that they were masters at that. I think they had one of the best defensive records in the league. So if there's a team who are going to stop City scoring, it's probably them. I mean, obviously that's easier said than done when you've got you know to face players like Erling Haaland, who just seems to get better and better. I mean, what? I would say about Newcastle is that they look now at home at, at this level, playing these massive games, even a, away from home. And I've sat in Pep Guardiola's press conference today, and you know sometimes he's asked about other teams, and, and he, you know he kind of dodges it a little bit. Today he, he was particularly effusive about it. He couldn't have spoken any more highly of, of the job Eddie Howe's done and, and what Newcastle have done last season and are also trying to achieve this year. So um, I expect that they'll go to the Etihad looking to the to defend as, as well as they have done last season. They've got players um, 
who were, who were fantastic going forward. Alexander Isak last last week um, was fantastic. His goals against Villa were the um, were unbelievable. Um, so they will fancy their chances. You know, they, they are as Pep Guardiola said today. They are a Champions League team, and, and he expects them to turn up at the Etihad and play like one. Enjoy the game tomorrow, Manchester City versus Newcastle. Gab, how many games are you going to watch this weekend, or are you at a game this weekend? I do not yet have my list for this weekend. Ah. Believe it, believe it or not. Uh, okay. But I would assume, yeah, uh, it'll be the usual twelve to fourteen games. <laughs> As I say, well, that course, somebody's got to do it, right? Oh, like, we all get paid to watch sports, okay? Like it's not a job; it's a hobby. Exactly. Like, you know, my, my, my great grandfather was a farmer. He worked the fields. I don't know what your grandparents did. Yours was probably a doctor, uh, Rob, but I know I'm assuming yours was very, very blue collar, Donaldson. So, you know. One was a minor, one was a head teacher. There you go. Who has the easier life? We cannot complain ever. No, we cannot, even if it means He's getting up early to watch games. He has got a point, Gab. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. Get that chair oiled. Rob, safe travels, and you can read Rob's stuff at ESPNFC.com. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.